Hi guys! In this video, I'm going to be teaching you about how to make bone broth, which is one of the best things that you can do for your health and the health of your family or loved ones. And I include loved ones because uh, I really started cooking bone broth when Violet, the mother dog, first gave birth to the puppies and I wanted to help her. And I wanted to help her by giving her as much nutrient, uh, uh, nutrients as possible. And so I know that bone broth is one of the best ways to do that. So in this video, I'm going to read to you a little bit from the bone broth Bible. And then we are also going to uh, make some bone broth. Um, and we're also going to check on the puppy. So also, if you notice, I do have bug bite on my, my head. I was just down in the garden hanging out with the puppies. This is the first day venturing beyond the steps and into the garden. So we just had fun just wandering around and, but there are a bunch of mosquitoes, so. <clears throat> um, so yeah, hi everyone, good afternoon. Let's, um, before we get started with this stuff, let's actually go check on the puppies because they're really cute and it's the right time of day. So here we are in Guatemala, Hummingbird Valley. Hi everyone, look at that beautiful <clears throat> the sun is beginning its descent towards the mountain range for our sunset. Hi, Scott. Hey, Dana. Hi, Carla. Yeah, Carla, good for a leak. You got good for lots of stuff. So here, let's just peek over the edge. Oh, yeah. So the puppies like to be oh. here now. So let's see. And then where are the other ones? So they actually <clears throat> don't really spend much time as much time in the doghouse anymore. Now they're here. And so that's why I moved the blanket here and washed it today. And I put the blanket here because a lot of times they end up sleeping here too. So that's really cute. <clears throat> There's my main puppy. Okay, so let's go inside. Let's go to the kitchen. <clears throat> You'll notice my voice is a little scratchy. I've been singing a lot and so uh, going through some some vocal changes right now as my um, as I become accustomed to using my my vocal cords. So let's. Um, huh. So here's the book. This is the the Bible of broth. And what's great what's great about this book is it goes into um, oh look at this wound healing, oh psoriasis, <coughs> rheumatoid arthritis, osteoporosis. Um, yeah, so it has a lot of really great information, amino acids, talking about protein, lupus and rheumatoid arthritis, profound benefits, marrow, it really teaches you a lot about, um, yeah, the body, so basic broth science, so we're not going to go into that, there's a whole book for that, <clears throat> I thought I would just read this part, oh, Susan, thank you for the stars, guys, I always appreciate it, you said stars, it's like a... And it's like a little hug. I appreciate it. And if you can't send stars, don't worry about it. I love everyone equally. So <clears throat> let's read the book. So science and tradition tells us that bone broth is nourishing. Very nourishing. How nourishing will vary from batch to batch depending on the diet and lifestyle of animal, bird, or fish, its age or overall health, how it's processed, your cooking methods, and your choice of other vegetables, herbs, and other ingredients. The nutritional profile will change depending on the type and proportion of bones, joints, tendons, ligaments, skin, and muscles. Veal bones from calves, for example, have more collagen and cartilage than bones from grown cows. <coughs> Knuckle bones, being joints, are higher in cartilage than shank bones from legs. Lambs and beef shank contain rich treasure trails of bone marrow, while pol poultry bones, being lighter, thinner, and mostly hollow, have less. Fish heads and tiny, dry hold fish offer the rich stores of iodine for healthy thyroid function. So stick with me, we're, just gonna, we're gonna finish reading this page. <clears throat> the body's ability to repair connective tissues such as bone, tendon, ligament, cartilage, skin, hair, and nail, nails, diminishes with age and with ill health. Bone broth, with its rich dissolves of collagen, cartilage, bone, and marrow, gives the body the right stuff, quote unquote, to rebuild and rejuvenate. These components also include vitamins and minerals, the conditionally essential amino acids, glycine, proline, and glutamine, and healing essential, quote unquote, sugars known as proto, pro, pro, proteoglycans. <clears throat> According to the principle of like feeds like, 
like feet like. Bone broth can give our bones strength and flexibility, our joints cushion and resilience, and our skin a youthful plumpness. What's more, the abundance of collagen in all types of bone broth supports heart health through strong and supple arteries, our vision with healthy corneas, digestion through gut healing, and overall disease prevention being immune system modulation. As we shall see, broth even contributes to emotional stability and a positive mental attitude. Mm. Daily requirements for collagen and other components of broth vary from person to person. They increase with disease, physical activity, exercise, stress, and other factors. Brittle hair and nails, underdeveloped musculature, premature skin aging, osteoarthritis, osteoporosis, gut disorders, and autoimmune disease are sure signs of deficiencies in collagen and other nutrients, which can be remedied with the help of genuine good old fashioned bone broth. Although dietary supplements are always an option, there's a synergy in broth that simmers with a healing power far greater than the sum of its parts. So, <clears throat> there's a lot more in this book. I encourage you to get it. And this is one of the books that I recommend this month in my latest blog post and email newsletter. The email newsletter hasn't gone out yet. I'm going to work on it after we make the broth. But the blog post is up with links to this book on Amazon. So, without further ado, adieu, let's... So, so if you want to just take a quick look at the book, Nourishing Broth. This was a book that someone gave me for my birthday. Thank you. Angela, you need to bathe in it. So, um, so let's just put this down. Oh yeah, we just had an amazing Zoom call with the High Vibe Tribe. It was phew, high vibe for sure. So <clears throat> I'm using chicken today. I'm making a chicken broth. So what we have going on here is I have it actually just sitting in cold water mixed with vinegar. So you want to use either vinegar or um, I think citrus will also do it because that will help extract the minerals from the broth. But to begin, <clears throat> you want to let your, your meat just sit in the vinegar water uh, for about an hour. This has been more than an hour, but that's okay. So, um, so this is a slow cooker. I got this at a thrift shop, um, this crock pot. It only has three settings. And so what's great about this is this is one of those foods that's so easy to make. Typically, I'll just throw everything in at night and then I wake up in the morning and I have this beautiful, beautiful chicken broth. And so I will put it on high setting overnight and then I can even leave, let it go for a few more hours and I'll just, if I leave the house, I put it on low. Now this is also <clears throat> one of my solutions to giving the dogs chicken bones. The dogs are gonna get the chicken bones whether or not I want them to. There's no place to put chicken bones that dogs can't get to. So, one of the ways that I remedy that is I cook the shit out of the bones. I cook the bones till they are so soft that there's nothing that can harm the dogs. There's no sharp splinters because everything just kind of like melts and just crunches away and they love it. So, uh, first things first, I just put the, the chicken in the vinegar. How much vinegar? I actually don't know. It's like a sploosh, 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 whatever. Not important. And so now what we're going to do, hold on, excuse me, now what we're going to do is we're going to wash our hands. I was just playing with the puppies in the garden, so I got covered in mosquito bites and I kind of got, <laughs> I kind of got a little bit of an allergic reaction going. Um, so hi everyone, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're tuning in from in the world. This afternoon, the sun is just beginning to set here in Guatemala. We have some really beautiful afternoon light. And before it gets dark, I thought that we could just make this video, a quick video, because this is something that's so good for you. It really nourishes your body. Um, and as you heard in the introduction, this can really affect a lot of things, really help a lot of things, from osteoporosis. Oh, buddy, it's a bee. Here, go. Go. There was a bee stuck in my house. On the... So it can help with a lot of things. You know me, I just like to provide a breadcrumb. If this tingles your dingle, go get the book, go do some research, and just know that this is a, a really great tool that you can put in your arsenal for supporting yourself and your well-being. Um, I also love it because the dogs love it. So my dogs are really lucky. Um, they get, whenever I make this in the morning, they each get a spoon of bone broth on their dry dog food. And then they also get chicken as well. So, so... We got a happy happy family in the house when, when mama's making the broth. So, hey, Sinellen, hi again, hi, honey. So, we're doing the broth. So, what's really great about the broth is, <clears throat> again, you can use a lot of different ingredients. Um, 
So onions are really important. You can throw in some potatoes. Um, the, you know, normally when I cook the broccoli, I just take the, the florets, but we can use like the, the stems. And so we're, I'm gonna let this, I'm gonna let this, oh, those green beans are done, they're donezo. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're just gonna cut up a bunch of stuff and put it in the pot. And then we're just gonna set it and forget it. And that's why, one of the reasons I really love um, this stuff is that, <clears throat> I don't know about you, but a lot of times I'm lazy or I don't want to cook. I don't want to. I don't really want to do it. And so, if I can, if I can give myself, let's just figure that there. That does not really work. I have this hanging basket that's like so right in the way. Sorry, guys. So, I love to figure out ways of cooking that um, I can do kind of like easily, easily, where I can really maximize you know, what I'm getting, my, the bang for my buck, you know? Um, I want to put in some effort, you know, there are times I didn't want to put in any effort and my body suffered. Uh, and there are times I put in a lot of effort. What I like about the, the making the, the broth is that it's something that I could just, I just gotta chop a bunch of stuff and then, and then in the morning it's Christmas, you know? So that's what we're gonna do. Let me find my knife. Where is my knife? Oh, where's that? There it is. Choo -choo. So, I like to use these um, Wusthof knives. It's still, I got some, I was chopping some garlic before, so we got a little bit of garlic on there, but that's great because we're gonna put garlic in the broth anyway. So one thing that's really good is, we're gonna start with chopping an onion. So onions are great to put in broth. They add a lot of flavor, um, and almost like a sweetness to it. One thing we wanna do is we, uh, we wanna balance sweet and salty. So we don't just want all salt, we don't just want all sweet. Actually, this is something I learned uh, in Thailand when I took my first cooking class in Thailand, was they balance, they literally put in sugar in the Thai cooking. And that's one of the reasons that Thai food tastes so good, because there's sugar in it. But you don't, it doesn't necessarily taste sweet, and that's because they combine then the salt, which is essentially what MSG is. MSG is monosodium glutinate, which is, you have your sodium, and your glutinate, your gluten, right? So, you are glucose. So you have your salt and your sugar. So, so yeah. So you can add things like honey, but the thing, the important thing also is don't cook honey, because something bad happens when you cook the honey. I can't remember what it was. I knew one point. Ah, you know what, I just realized. I wanna make the onion pieces a little bigger because um, when I spoon out the broth for the dogs, I take the onions out because onions aren't good for dogs. So, now I'm just going to, here's my, my crock pot. Here's my crock pot. I already have a chicken in there. I'm working with a chicken broth today. Another really great thing to do is if you can, if you can find like a, um, a butcher who does like different parts, like getting like pig's feet is really good. In fact, I have some pig's feet. Yeah, Austin, I was in a movie. I was in a movie with Sandra Bullock. Yeah, I am I'm that famous prostitute from the heat. There you go. All right. So let's see what we got going here. So these are some, they might be a little bit too cold. And, um, you know, I might pull it out and then maybe I'll, I'll throw in a pig's foot. So the pig's feet, so again, what we're doing when we're taking broth is we're getting a lot of collagen and gelatin. So I know that's kind of gross, I'm sorry. Um, but that's going to go into, that's going to go into the pot here. Um, so, cut up the onions. Yeah, Carla, MSG is so toxic. So we don't want to put MSG in our food, of course, even though it tastes amazing. It makes everything taste so good. We don't want to do it, but we can harness the, um, the wisdom of what's happening by combining salt and sugar. Michelle, I was in the heat. I was in the heat with Sandra Bullock and Melissa McCarthy. So before I was a, I guess, professional blogger making videos here online. Um, I was an actress, which definitely prepared me, you know, got me comfortable in front of the camera. That's why I started this page that you're on now. Was, this is my originally my, my acting page. So, so yeah. So I just put in one onion and now I'm just going to take some of the, God, that light. Now I'm just going to take the, some vegetables that I have in my drawer and just chop them up and put them in. And... I'm gonna peel them. Some people say don't peel them because you get more nutrients, but I don't know. I like to I like to peel them. 
You don't have to do it the way I do it. You can find your own way. So essentially what we're gonna be doing here is we're, ooh, those onions. We're gonna be chopping up these vegetables. We're gonna add the vegetables and then we're gonna add some, some spices. So if you have bay leaves and you're like, what do I do with bay leaves? Now's a great time to pull out those bay leaves and toss one of those in. In fact, let's go for it. So bay leaves are this magical concoction, magical creature that just like makes things taste better. All you do is you just, boop, actually we'll just do two. Toss them in, there you go. So I made a broth where I didn't put anything in. It was just for the dogs. It was actually one of those, those pig's feet. And I was just like, I just wanna cook something for the dogs and I'm not gonna bother adding any of the spices cause I'm not gonna eat it. I actually couldn't eat it cause of the parasite that I had. You can't uh, take pork products um, cause it exacerbates the situation. So I just like, so I just threw the bones in with, with nothing, with, with no seasoning, with no, um, I don't think I've even put it in an onion. Just like, just, just, just the meat and hot water and I cooked it. And in the morning, it actually smelled pretty gross. It was not like a, like a savory, like, ooh, like when you do with all the spices and the onion and the garlic in the morning, you know, I leave this cooking overnight. In the morning you wake up and it's like, oh, what is that amazing smell? It's like, oh yeah, give it to me. Uh, and that's really a function of the spices. The spices and, and the and the other things that you you ex accent the bra the, the bones with right or maybe it was just those were some really stanky pig's feet um i don't know what i do know from my experience is that when i add a few more things it tastes better so right now i'm, I'm um, gonna add some uh ooh, some uh ginger uh, yeah, Joni, sugar is cancer fertilizer. Sugar is bad for us. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's really important to understand that sugar, a really sugary diet, that you're creating the conditions for cancer, you're creating the conditions for parasites, you're creating the conditions for, uh, for some, you're creating an ecosystem where things that can hurt you can thrive. So we wanna be mindful of that. So when I was um, um, combating my parasites, I was cutting out sugar. Now that I have overcome the parasites, I'm introducing a little bit of sugar. So I don't take processed white sugar. I will use honey. I will use maple syrup. Um, and then I actually use, I use, mostly for my sweetness, I use licorice. I use a natural root, a licorice root. It creates a, a sweet flavor. Um, and that's actually, it's not sugar. It just kind of like mimics sugar, um, which is really great. The only thing to consider it, licorice can actually really help heal your gut. It's really, really good, um, especially if you are very vata, if you're very high, strong, the licorice can help you ground. Um, yeah, exactly, Lynn. If you're eating a lot of sugar, you're creating a... So, so that's the thing, is like the, what we eat creates a certain environment, right? So, um, but it doesn't mean we have to be extreme about it and like never take anything sweet ever again because you're setting yourself up for failure if you're putting that much pressure on yourself. So moderation is key. Understanding your system is key. Understanding what you need is key. Understanding your body is key. Understanding what your body is asking for is key, you know? Um, and then also understanding that, you know, you have your own unique ecosystem that needs to be honored and tended. Um, and so someone's, one person's advice might actually not be good for you. So that's also why we have to really listen to our own bodies. Okay, so I just cut some ginger. Putting ginger in, great. Now I'm gonna cut up some carrots. Funny, funny, should I? Yeah, I am gonna peel it. I almost didn't peel it. So we'll do this, and then we'll just we'll just hop over to the spices. So um, the carrots add again, and sugar. Carrots add a certain sweetness uh, to the broth, which is very nice. So again, ways to balance the saltiness is to add carrots and then you're gonna get a really much richer flavor profile right okay so I'm chopping up the carrots the carrots are also good for the dogs because I'm gonna be sharing this with the dogs I don't want to just give them meat I want to give them the vegetables as well and I'm gonna give myself the vegetables as well so this is a great example of how your self-care when you're taking care of yourself and doing something to nurture and nourish yourself can overflow to the people, to the humans, and the other than human can around you. 
Yeah, Austin, you getting just a lot of sugar like Mountain Dew. That's not, that's not good for you, brother. That's that's a very unhealthy sugar. Um, so other sugars, other sources of sugars, beets. So this beet has sugar in it. But it's a different kind of sugar than your Mountain Dew sugar. Uh, I personally don't drink soda. I, I just, I think it's, personally, it's gross. I tried, I tried to drink some Pepsi. <laughs> I was with my mom at Costco, and we were just having a moment getting a hot dog, and it was really special. And I tried to, like, okay, I'm going to go for the whole experience, and I got a soda, and I took, like, a sip of it, and I was like, ah, it hurts my, it hurts my, my mouth. It hurt my tongue. I didn't like it. <laughs> so I am definitely not a person who drinks soda, for sure. Um... It's not bad if you do. It's just how how is that working out for you? What kind of internal ecosystem are you creating when you ingest all of that processed sugar? Mm -hmm. It's working for you, great. If it's not, great. What are you gonna do? Up to you. Mm. You need this in your life, but you're too sick to go to the store. Well, honey, that could be a time that you ask someone for help or you hire someone on TaskRabbit. There are these apps where you can pay someone like 10 bucks to go do something for you. And there are people who are looking for those jobs. So, you know, instead of, you know, look for the ways that you can do it instead of lamenting all the ways you can't, you know? So, so here's some rosemary. This is some fresh rosemary that I got at Casa Curativa. Uh, the other day I went and did some volunteering in the garden and received some, yeah, some, some medicine in exchange for my time and labor. So I got a fresh sprig of rosemary. I think I'm going to use the whole thing. We'll just break that off. So, mm, smells so good. So, so far I just added the chicken, chicken bones. We learned in the introductory reading that different bones will have different qualities and based on what you need, maybe you need something with more cartilage and more collagen. Um, I'm definitely getting a ton of protein with the chicken, but I'm not getting as much collagen as I would with other other types of bones. Now I'm adding the rosemary. I added the bay leaves. I added a bunch of, so the onion is going to give it some great flavor. I don't have it, but I, I wish I did. I would put in celery. So celery is another vegetable that will give it some really great flavor. Even though celery itself is not like an exciting vegetable, when you put it in broth, it, it really enhances the flavor profile. So bay leaves, I added some rosemary. I have some fresh thyme from the garden too. No, not the temporal concept. Literally thyme from the garden. Thyme is also really great. Again, all of these are, are medicine foods as well. Thyme uh, is a great antimicrobial, antiviral. So when I was recovering, as I have been recovering from, and I'm still recovering from the antibiotics, I took a really serious, intense antibiotic for 10 days to treat the parasites. That led to me having um, like a mucousy cough because my immune system was really reduced from all I had gone through. Uh, and so thyme has been my ally. I would make a tea from thyme and I, I would combine this in mullein. And I really noticed that as I, as I did this, it really helped um, ease and put away my cough. Um, so I'm adding that to the soup. Great. I'm gonna take some coriander seeds. I'm gonna add some coriander seeds. These are really great for your stomach. Also add a really wonderful flavor profile. They almost add like a like a nutty flavor to it. So coriander is really great. When I do my um, my detox tea, that really helps kind of like clear and flush the system. I'll combine coriander, fenugreek, fennel, and cumin in that. And when I do my cookbook, um, probably sometime around the spring, inshallah, I'm going to be giving you all of these recipes. Right now, you can just hear it kind of verbatim. Um, so yeah, actually, why did I put those away? Let's go ahead and add some of these. So I'm going to dash in some fenugreek. How much? A splooge. You know, go by your feeling. You don't want to do too much because these spices can be pretty powerful. Fennel. Great. These, these, um, combinations are really classic in Indian cooking. So a lot of times when people, like I had my friend over the other day, we were doing a, a jam, a practice session on the ukulele. And my friend saw, and he got to eat my food. And he's like, oh, this is like a curry. And I'm like, maybe it's a curry. I don't know. I mean, I'm using all of the same, essentially all of the same um, um, herbs and spices as they do in Indian cooking. So put in the green pepper, oregano, fennel, and you agree, corn. Yeah, I think we just got the heavy hitters. I'm going to add a, a dash of pepper. So we want to put salt and pepper. So, so that's the other thing. Calm down. Calm down. Uh, 
<clears throat> you don't want to do too much because it's very, it, it is also easy to like, you can overpower the, the flavor if you try adding too much. So, you know, it's good to uh, see what works, try some different things, and just know that this is like one of those things that you're gonna get it over time. You're gonna figure out like everything else. You're gonna figure out what works for you over time. Wow, that light is really intense. Kiki, you're doing a parasite cleanse now. Oof, girl, I feel you. Cut out sugar, cut out bread, cut out dairy, um, cut out just anything that you really want. Just don't do it. It's the demons talking. It's the, oh, I forgot this. Um, yeah, and that's something to understand is like when you have parasites, it's not you driving your behavior. A lot of times it's something, something that's bad for you is driving your behavior, which is like, it's, it's addiction, right? Mm. Also, I have some asafetida. This is another, this is another, mm. this is another special one in Indian cooking. All of these things are what make Indian cooking so flavorful. And it's all things that, you know, when we put it into our bone broth, we are making it flavorful, but also each one of these, each one of these herbs and spices has their own sort of medicinal properties, which is why this is also really this, this healing medicine food, which is why they talked about in that book, when it comes to broth, like you can take supplements, you can take vitamins, but when it comes to broth, there's a healing power in broth where it, the sum is greater than the parts. There's a certain alchemy that goes on. So here's some oregano. Oregano, oregano is also so good for you. And I'm gonna throw in a little bit of cardamom. Cheryl, can you, can you see tomorrow? Sure, yeah, in the morning I can, um, I can show you. And of course, we love our turmeric. Turmeric, great for inflammation. Hi, peace. Hi, honey. I see you there. Drinking raw goat's milk with herbs. Interesting, interesting approach. I don't know. I mean, maybe. Is that dairy? Oh, that's tough. That's tough. That's tough. Parasites are such a challenge, and such everyone has their own journey with them. Let's see. What else do I want to put? I'm just looking at all my spices. You know, you can put... You know what's fun to put in? Actually... I'm not gonna do it now in this one, but you can play around with putting some cinnamon in it. These are some, some nice um, cinnamon sticks, but I'm not gonna bother because also that's a little bit too heating for me right now. Um, we got the thyme. Oh, I love these black seeds. Black seeds are really special. Plus they look cool. Really adds a nice, uh, like a fun accent to what you're making. So, all right, let's see, is there anything else that I wanna put in? You know, the cool thing also about the broth is that like a lot of times at night, oh, the garlic, let's add some garlic. Um, a lot of times at night, I will um, just kinda like get it going and then in the morning I'll wake up early and I'll like, oh yeah, let me throw in a few more things. Like you don't have to do it all at once. I mean, it's better or is it? I don't know, you know? Cause that's the cool thing cause it's gonna cook for so long. Oh yeah, here we go. It's gonna cook for so long. Um, so these are some, some veg that, um, I had Natalia cook last week and I, I didn't really eat them because I was still recovering from the parasites. And so here's beets, carrots, and sweet potatoes. All these still have a lot of sugar in them. Um, so I was just completely avoiding them, but these need to get it. So, um, this is probably like the last chance for them to make their way into nourishing beings. So we're just going to go ahead and, and add these in. Yeah, I'm... So happy to be done with the parasite medicine um, and to just like kind of be on the other side of that. I'm still, I'm still recovering from the antibiotics, um, but it definitely feels like I'm, like I've made a lot of progress. Okay, so now we got this mound. There's, there's chicken in there, there's spices, there's a bunch of vegetables. It's pretty high up. And so when I put this to boil, uh, I'm actually gonna really make sure the lid is off so it's gonna release the steam and the water level is gonna go down. So one thing you wanna know is that you want you don't want too much water, you want the water just to cover the bones. When I made my first broth, when I didn't know what I was doing, I just felt the, the top, the, the, it was a big pot and the bones were down here in the water. No, no, you wanna just do just kind of above the, um, just above the, the, the water line or the bone line. Um, and then you can also add more liquid, like as it, cause it's gonna simmer and reduce. You can come back and add more liquid. Um, and in the morning, I'll typically scoop off a few spoons and put it in the dog's food and then I'll add some more liquid and just keep it going for, for a few more hours. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know about the raw goat's milk thing. I know that you don't want to take dairy, and so that's still dairy. So um, I personally, um, you know, I would say see, see how it feels. Like if you take goat's milk, are you still having the runs? Like, like how does that affect you? And then, and then pull back, stop, 
don't do that and then see how does that affect you. So I think this is also part of it, instead of being like, there's one rule for everyone and all things and you get yeah, out, like, okay, try it and see what happens. Does it help you? Does it help you get better? Does it, do the symptoms stay the same? Do you get worse? Okay, that's good information about your body, you know? So, okay, so now here we go. All we did was we just chopped up some stuff, threw it in here. Um, you know what, actually, I feel like I'm gonna add a little bit of, it's just a spoon of coconut oil. I mean, there's always gonna, uh, there's already gonna be, you know, fat and some good stuff coming off the chicken bones. Um, but I just, I just, I just like, I, you know, I really like my healthy fats. You know, your brain, your nervous system, your nervous system, I know your brain, I can't remember what it's nervous system. Fats are so important for our body. And it's unfortunate that in so many ways, fats have been kind of like, like de demonified, de demified, villainized. Um, but we need those healthy fats. The, our body needs those fats to help us regenerate our tissues and regenerate our our brain and, and, and grow and, and build. And so if we're keeping fat out of our diet, we can actually be causing ourselves a lot more harm than doing good. Oh, the garlic. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. I'm getting it. Hold, please. Hold, please. So one way that I like to save time is I batch two things. So I actually, an even better way to save time is to get someone else to do it for you. So when Natalia comes, uh, who helps me with cleaning once a week, sometimes I'll also give her some tasks of like, hey, can you peel all of these garlic? Can you chop up these vegetables and put them in a container? So that's also whether or not you can hire someone to do that for you. That's something that you can do, you know, once a week. Just chop your vegetables, prepare them, put them in a Tupperware. So when you get home and you're tired and you don't really want to do all the thing cooking, you can just, ah, okay, it's easy. Just grab the veg. They're already chopped up, you know. So these are, these garlics are, are full. So, you know what? I'm just going to put, I'm just gonna, should I chop them? I'm going to smash them. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to smash them so we get that, um... I'm gonna smash them so we get more surface area. So do I use the, the fire cider? Uh, I actually use my oregano vinegar um, in this one because I'm actually out, I'm pretty much at the end. I need to go buy more fire or more um, apple cider vinegar. And my other one, I mean, I could use that one, but I'm kind of leaving it. Oh, and I have to, I have to show you what happened. Stay tuned. We had a really great learning experience with that oregano vinegar and I actually haven't checked on it um, since I found out what was happening and I actually need to do some remediation because it did not go the way I wanted it to. And so I'm gonna see if I can salvage it. So here I'm just smashing the garlic just to really like open it up and create more surface area in the cooking process. Um, and actually, you know what, I'm also, oh, I don't have a, do I have a tea prepared? No, I need to make some tea. So also uh, when I was recovering um, from the so the um, amoeba weakened my immune system and so it also did the antibiotics. And so I had a little bit of a, a bacterial infection, which I'm actually still recovering from. One of the ways that I treated that is with raw garlic. Uh, so raw garlic can be a really, really great medicine just to help fight bacteria, bacteria infections in your body. And I mean the bad bacteria. We know that there's good bacteria that we want. We don't want to rid our systems of bacteria because we would die straight up. Um, so again, balance. So if I had some water, I would take some of this now, but I'll put a few aside and I'll eat those after because it helps. You just got to be careful when, when taking raw garlic. It, sometimes it can give you an upset tummy. Um, nice. Crystal, you just made bone broth on low cook crock pot for 12 hours, eight jars. Nice. So you can make, so this is also another great thing. You can make more, put it in the jars and then you can store, store it in the fridge or better yet, store it in the freezer. I think it'll hold for five days in the fridge, but it'll hold even longer if it's stored in the freezer. So again, this is another one of those great foods that like you can make it, set it, forget it, and then make it. And then you have like an easy thing like, okay, it's time to cook lunch. Let me just grab a, a jar of broth, add some noodles. Great. You got chicken soup. Okay. I'm going to take all this garlic. Mmm, some good garlic. Jim, how about turmeric? We already added it, brother. We already added it. What I want to know is how about my apron? Nobody called me out on my apron. So there, I added some coconut oil and the garlic. And I think in that moment, I just sprayed myself. Great. Um, all right, is there any anyone else who wants to come in, who wants to hop in the pot? 
Ah, oregano. Let's get some fresh oregano from the garden. Nice, Holly, you got the books, Nourishing Tradition and Nourishing Broth. So Holly's talking about this book. This is where I uh, am getting my, my learning from, um, and which I'm sharing to you. I'm actually recommending this book this month on my newsletter slash blog. So uh, you can consult that for the link to find it. So let's go quickly to the garden and just grab some fresh oregano. We'll probably see the puppies on the way. Um, is garlic bad for dogs? No. Uh oh. Hi guys. So I think this is their new spot. All right. Rosemary's looking so great. Trina, if you're watching, that's Rosie. She gave me a rosemary plant for my birthday. Yeah, puppy. Hi. All right, let's get the oregano. I think we still have some in here. Yes, hello. Hello, hello. So let's go down to the bigger plant. Because, yeah. Hi, guys, come on. Let's go. Sue says, yes, garlic is bad for dogs. Sue, that's really interesting because I have these flea treat things for dogs or made for dogs it includes garlic as one of the ingredients to um help them repel the bugs so i think probably in moderation um oh my god <sighs> so this is the first day that the puppies are following me down to the garden so it's super cute yeah jane it's a lot a lot of erica in one day but you know it's never too much never too much puppies never too much never too much puppy never too much puppy yeah. Are you such a big dog now? Cavorting in the garden with other mom? Okay, hello, sweet oregano. Hello, hello. So this is a this is not the oregano you probably know in the West. Um this is a Central American version of oregano, but it's still still the same family, still the same guy. So I come asking for your medicine for this bone broth that I'm making. May I please receive your medicine? Thank you. Sorry. Say thank you so much. Thank you, friend. Thank you for allowing me to receive your medicine. I love you very much. Mm, you're looking so good. I'm so proud of you. So the cool thing to know about when you trim plants, it actually helps them. I used to think that, oh no, you're hurting the plant, but you're actually helping the plant. You're helping the plant because every time you see this, this bunch is really, really popping here. That's because I trimmed this. And so now it's growing even stronger. So what you, what you cut grows back stronger. Cheryl, there are still five puppies. There are five puppies. So found homes. Oh, are you pooping in the path? Oh, better, better in the path. Oh, well, that's a good looking little poop. That's a good looking little poop. It's not a diarrhea. It's a good sign. Okay, well, I wish you, whatever, man. All right. Oh, okay, we got the oregano, we got the puppies, we got some gas. All right. There we go. Oh! Oh, my God. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hi, little ones. Yeah, so yeah. Oh. So, there are five puppies. There you go. Yeah, they're, they're very excited. They're, they are the picture of youthful exuberance. All right, I gotta remember to bring in my laundry before it rains. Catherine, they got rid of their worms. Seems like it. Uh, seems like it. The vet is coming back on July seventh to do the final administration of the of the worm medicine. So uh, it's like a two part thing apparently. So so yeah, but they're doing great. Look at them. Before they were struggling to get up the steps, and now they're they're doing great. You know, they're so adorable. Peace, where's Six? Six was adopted. Six was adopted by a little girl uh, locally um, whose father, Marcos, um, uh, is a local guy who comes to the house to do some maintenance sometimes. And so he came to do some maintenance on the fence to try to, to try to close up the fence where the dogs were getting through. He did his best, and then the dogs made another hole. So. Stella's the angry old lady upstairs. She does not like 
the puppies i know she does not like the puppies and she makes it very very clear to them that this is her turf and they have to stay out so so they so they stay out it's better it's better that way as much as yeah and then uh but they now they sleep over here so i moved their blanket here so i washed the blanket today and then put their little blanket here so they they like to yeah they, 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 now they want to be as close as possible, which, and they're doing great. They're doing great, so. Yeah, Cheryl, if they were your puppies, you'd have a hard time adopting them. I'm, I know, when they, when that first puppy got taken away, that was hard. That was hard, and I had to really practice letting go and be like, all right, you know, wait, wait, no, no, no just let it, let, it, let it go. He's going to a good home, got a good little girl who, who loves him, and. Is Mama coming around? Yeah, Mama's still coming around. Actually, that's that's one of the reasons I can't come inside. This morning, Mama attacked one of the puppies. Two of the puppies. Hi, Bev. Uh, two of the puppies got inside. I was I was in bed. I was writing my journal and I was looking out the window. Oh, okay, some of the puppies got inside. Okay, they're playing. They're being cute. And I heard Mama growling. Mama was growling, but nothing was happening. And then finally, and then finally. Um, I heard this horrible sound of mama and I saw the window. Mama was attacking one of the puppies. I was like, no, I think they got into her food bowl or something. Um, but it was scary. It was scary and it sounded really violent. And I was really scared that, oh, she killed the puppy. Oh no. I was so scared. I was going to come out and, and find something horrible, but it came out and it, she had just given it a good thrash and she gave it a good big dog thrashing. And so the puppy was scared, but it wasn't hurt. So I held it and, 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 uh, yeah, it was, it was a pretty intense moment this morning in the house. Uh, but mama got the message that that's not acceptable. Um, and so, so yeah, so it's just, it's just better for the peace of the kingdom. If the puppies just stay in puppy land, um, and the big dogs, it's like the, there's the adult table and the kids table. Where's Bronco? Bronco, Bronco and mom are out. They'll be back later. Bronco's still having problems with his leg, so the vet is coming tomorrow. Oh yeah, so so I just chopped off the chopped up the oregano, and then now I just put the oregano in. So so here you go. It's just a mixture of vegetable of the chicken bones, chicken chicken with the meat and the bones, just raw, filled with water with some vinegar, and then I added um, potato, sweet potato, carrot, beet, and then I added some bay leaves. Uh, oh, onion also is really important. Uh, I added coriander, cumin, fennel, fenugreek. We added some garlic. Um, oh, you know what would be good to put in this? Some kelp. Some good old-fashioned kelp. Thank you, Peace. Thank you. Some good old-fashioned kelp. So this is a kind of seaweed. And so this provides iodine. It provides lots of good stuff. This is especially good to give to your animals. It helps their skin and their, 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 um, their coats. So I put this in. I often will mix it in with their with the with the dog food when I get when I have like a good soupy thing like it doesn't just go on the dry food they do not like it um, it's kind of seaweedy uh, but if I can mix it in with the broth you know that's the thing I with uh, with kids it's the thing with kids sometimes you have to hide the good stuff you know you can't just give it to them they don't want it you gotta hide the broccoli in the mac and cheese you gotta hide the thing that's good for them in the thing that they want. All right, so, great, there we go. So now, of course, any utensils I use to mix this, I'm gonna go ahead and wash and not, not use again because there's raw chicken in there, so. But yeah, here we go. Uh, did I put salt? Yeah, I did. I put salt, I put pepper, I put turmeric, I put oregano, I put thyme, I put some black seeds. Uh, oh, let me add some caraway seeds. Good for the fats. Good for the fats. And I can always, I can always use help with the fats. Yeah, the parasites really kind of, yeah, they, that's a, a really big challenge to repair the gut after parasites. And so one of the indicators that you're having some gut challenges uh, is you got the fats, you got the gas. So, um, Wait, some marshmallow. No, no. All right. You know, um, Rita, 
Rita, if you're watching, I saw you watching before. I was thinking about your comment the other day about when I was putting on all these spices too much, possibly too much, and and I think you're I think you're right that it's funny. I'm like, oh, one more. Um, it's important to not overload the system. It's important to have that discernment. More is not always better. So, um, you know, I think I, everything I've put in here is just like a basic soup cooking thing. They traditionally work together. Um, and yeah, I just want to be mindful of that. I want to be mindful. And, and when I can keep it simple, that's really great. So like with my teas, um, instead of putting like 20 herbs in the tea, I'm trying to keep it down to like two or three. You know, that, that's been a practice for me. So in a lot of ways, my practice is to simplify and create more space and not try to overload because more is not necessarily better. Uh, ooh, Appalachian truffles. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Yes. Um, all right, so there we go. Uh, where's the top to this? Donde esta la tapadera? But what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna move this down the counter and then we're just gonna plug it in and then we're gonna set it and forget it. So it can go for a while. Ah, oh, there it is. It can go, it can go for, for a while. In fact, um, you can do it four hours, six hours, 12 hours. Some bones, depending on which ones, it can go up for 24 hours. The longer you cook them, what you're doing is you're extracting those minerals, you're extracting all that good stuff that, that is made up in the bone, um, and you're uh, putting it into a state where it's bioavailable for you to digest it. Because uh, if you just go, you know, chewing on bones, you're not necessarily going to get the good stuff, but a bone broth, there's a, a healing alchemy that takes place when it is um, simmered, when it is cooked, a long, slow cook, right, rather than a... There's a lot to be said about the benefits of a long, slow simmer, and that, that's a metaphor that translates to a lot of different things, like a relationship. A long, slow simmer is better than a big, fast fire that explodes and then goes out, you know? Oh, Jeff! Oh, hi, Jeff! I haven't seen you in a while. Thanks for the stars, honey. Welcome back. Okay, so, so there we go. So there you have it. Cut some stuff, set it, and forget it. If I had more space, I could add the broccoli stems, but I think I am uh, right at the limit. So I'm gonna leave that cooking with the side exposed so lots of steam can get out. I mean, even once it's going in a boil, I might even just take the top off just to bring the water down a little bit. Um, and yeah, there you have it. So now, now it's just cleanup. Oh, there was also rosemary. We also added rosemary. Rosemary and bay. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, now that that's going and now that the sun is setting, I'm going to get to work. I gotta get that newsletter out and I have to uh, get some, so I have to process my videos to go out on Instagram and YouTube because I'm still catching up, um, but it is all good. Penelope, do I eat quinoa? There's quinoa here. Uh, I, I find that I don't digest it so well and I just noticed that I eat quinoa and my digestion doesn't receive it so well. So. For me, that's not something that I that I really use, but um, yeah. Oh yeah, the wa the sound. That's the that's the water from the tea boiling again. Nice low low simmer. So now I'm going to make a tea, make a tea, and then sit down and get to work. So also, Hi Vibe Tribe. I'm gonna post the the recording of the of the Zoom call we just did. So if anyone missed it or if you want to rewatch it, we just had some really great moments. Um, it'll be there. Yeah, Carol, it was it was a good one. I think I think we I think we were there for almost like two hours. So luckily we we had some technical difficulties. So there are gonna be two parts. So that might even be easier to watch than if they were all one. All right, all right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Oh, Cheryl, good good luck with your colonoscopy tomorrow. May the memory of cute puppies be with you. Choo choo. Where where where's other mom? Other mom. Other mom, other mom. I say, hey puppies, hey puppies. That's the call. And then they go wild. They go wild. Did she call? Did she call? Did she call? Did she call? Where is she? Where is she? Where is she? You can do it, little one. Let's see what they're doing down there. That's Saya. That's the only one I've named. Saya. She doesn't know her name. Choo choo. Look up. No. Can't figure it out. 
Let's see, where's the blonde one? Hmm. I don't know. He's somewhere. Oh, got it. There he is. Hi. Hi, baby. Yes, yeah, Stella, you're my puppy. You're my puppy. Oh, Beverly, your puppy's having surgery tomorrow. I'm sending your puppy so much love. Good luck. Good luck from my puppies to yours. All right. Penelope, I think it's Saya. In my brain, I see it as S-A-Y-A. And the cool thing about Saya is that she's going to be adopted, I think, by my future neighbor, this woman, an, a local indigenous woman, um, who recently lost her dog, um, or her dog passed away and so she was very very excited about the opportunity to get a, a good healthy puppy um uh, so yeah so you know even though there are a lot of street dogs people still want dogs they want puppies they just don't want the street dogs because those are kind of like wild often dirty and sick dogs and these are um yeah healthy happy well cared for dogs who have never seen the street and you know just a different kind of creature so I'm doing my best to take good care of them and give them lots of love so when they do go on to other homes they are well acclimated to humans and in affection and are um, yeah just not tainted by fear not tainted by fear and illness and neglect you know but really you know it's like when we when we are well fed well loved and healthy we are good dogs you know so all right, guys. Love you. Oh my God, it could go forever. It could go forever. I think they're having a lot more fun now that they discovered the rest of the yard. So their world has expanded exponentially. Does Mama still come around? Yeah, Mama comes around, but she 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 has um, she has a lot less patience now. So um, patience for the puppy. She she. She doesn't like to spend so much time with them because I think they really annoy her. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks so much for being with me. I love you all. I hope you uh, enjoy the, that breadcrumb, the breadcrumb of the bone broth. I hope you try out making your own bone broth. If you don't have a slow cooker, go to a thrift shop. See if you can find a cheap one um, or getting a, um, what is it, a hot pot or smart pot or wise pot quick pot the one where you just like set it you time it it's like a pressure cooker i can't remember i would love to get one of those but i just have the good old-fashioned one right now so um so good luck good luck good luck good luck on your journey i love you i send you my love i hope this breadcrumb helps you on your path towards greater wellness and nourishing yourself so you can be a good dog so you can be a very very good dog in the world and and get the good home and the good love that you deserve because you're a good dog. You're a very, very good dog. I love you. Slow cooker, crock pot. No, there's a, there's a, there's a smart pot, a hot, no, what's the, there's a thing, there's a brand, it's a thing. I want, I want one. Hot pot, Instapot. Thank you, Sue. There we go. Instapot, Instapot. There we go. We did it. You did it. I struggled. You did it. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Lisa. You guys got it. Yeah, y'all are wiser than me. I'm just a beginner here on this planet. I'm just figuring things out. So, all right. Love you.